Mr. Chair, Excellencies, Distinguished Colleagues, on behalf of the government and people of St. Kitts and Nevis, I commend the People's Republic of China for hosting and the Secretariat for organizing this high-level segment as part of the COP15 process, which seeks to drive political impetus towards the development of an ambitious and effective post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Mr. Chair, the global scientific evidence is overwhelmingly clear that the natural capital that our societies and economies are so heavily dependent on has been declining at an alarming rate, and urgent action to restore and safeguard biodiversity is required now. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis is convinced that such global response calls for the implementation of an ambitious and effective resource mobilization strategy, which is central to achieving the targets articulated in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. We believe that despite the challenges, parties should strive to close the biodiversity finance gap estimated at 700 billion per year by 2030, both by increasing funding for biodiversity from all sources and by reducing expenditures harmful to biodiversity. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis strongly supports the Conming Declaration and affirms its commitment to work with ministries of finance and other relevant ministries to reform incentive structures, eliminating, phasing out, or reforming subsidies and other incentives that are harmful to biodiversity, while protecting people in vulnerable situations to mobilize additional financial resources and align all financial flows in support of the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. Mr. Chair, we recognize that a fundamental consideration in reducing the financial gap is for the global financial system to take progressive and accelerated steps towards supporting a more sustainable engagement with nature, which would result in a financial system that aligns financial flows with biodiversity objectives. At the national level, we will continue to work towards developing, through strategic partnerships, a robust financial strategy to support the implementation of the National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan, NBSAP. Mr. Chair, we understand that investments in environmental protection has a high rate of return, but must be made today in order to consolidate our economic growth and human well-being in our countries for tomorrow. I therefore urge my distinguished colleagues present today to commit to reducing the financing gap and ensuring the means of implementation. May these high-level deliberations and commitments over these two days be productive and galvanize the required long-term political will towards the development of an ambitious post-2020 global biodiversity framework. I thank you.